This time we will take a ride through the process of procedurally modeling and animating a multipoint star. It's one of the first looping videos I made using Blender geometry nodes. To be honest, when I first did this project I manually modeled one star piece, then cloned and animated it using geo nodes. But with time and through a lot of experimentation, I managed to find a way to build it procedurally with options to customize the points count, radius, ridge height, timer interval and so on. I believe you will learn a lot too. We will start low level using a curve line followed immediately after by a resample node. The count value will determine the number of points for our star. Set it to 5 but even better, let's drive the number using a group input. In the Options tab, rename this input star point count, set the default value to 5, a minimum of 3 and a maximum count of 60. Let's now build a circle out of this line. Divide the points indices by the total number of points. This fits the indices into a 0 to 1 range. Multiply the division result by 2 times pi, which is the angle of a full circle expressed in radians. Using both sine and cosine nodes, we can use the resulting angle to determine the coordinates in space for the points of our circle. Feed these coordinates into the position input for a set position node. As you can see, the circle is not fully closed, so use a set spline cyclic node for that. That's a lot of work for a simple circle, you might say. It is indeed, but by doing it this way, we make sure that the first point is always aligned with the positive y axis and also helps us avoid some problems with the indices of the polygons after the subdivision. But more on that later. Continue by filling this curve. Before going too far, to better see what we're doing, let's turn wireframes on in the viewport display settings. Switch the mode to Angons. Continue by adding a subdivide mesh node this divides our circle into 5 polygons, leaving us with 10 points. If we push the corner points away, we should have a real star. Add another set position node, connect a scale vector to the position input, and feed a position node to the scale node's first input. Sliding this value moves all the points away but we only need to scale the corners. We can filter them out by measuring their distance from the center. The default output of both sine and cosine functions is in the range of negative 1 to 1, so the corner points of our pentagon are one unit away from the center. Let's connect a compare equal node to the selection input of the set position node. Change its data type to float and feed a vector length node to input A. The vectors whose length we need to measure are the position of the points themselves. Slide the scale value now and watch how it only scales the corner points. Set the value to 2 and create another user control with a group input. Leave the default to 2, set the minimum to 1 and the maximum value to 3. You can always change these limits later if you want. The next step is to split these polygons apart with a split edges node. To create the ridges that rise from the center point and end at the outline corners, we'll extrude the faces. Uncheck the individual toggle and lower the offset scale value to 0. 
we'll use a somewhat strange method to generate the geometry for the ridges. Add yet another set position node. The points we will select for manipulation belong to the top part of the geometry generated from the extrude node. Now feed a scale node to the position input. We will scale these top contours towards the center down to zero. This generates the topology for the ridges, but if you move the model around, you can clearly see that the faces are still flat. Feed a combined vector to the offset input, start raising the Z value and enjoy the ridge taking shape. Set this value to 0 0.5 and create another user input to control its height. Have a look under the model and see that it's hollow from the inside. The extrude node doesn't add a cap to the geometry. That's ok, but because we set an offset scale value of 0, there are now a lot of overlapped faces all around the edges of our star. Append a merge by distance node and change the mode from all to connect it. Because our polygons are separated, but still have overlapping points along the inner borders, this mode makes sure that all merging affects only points that are part of the same mesh island, thus avoiding a total meshup of the geometry. Open the spreadsheet window and keep an eye on the mesh components count while turning the merge node on and off. You can see the number shrink. Now what about the lower part of the star? We'll keep using our strange method. Add another extrude after the merge. We'll work on the side part of the geometry from the previous extrude this time. Again, lower the scale value to zero. Continue with yet another set position node and yet again we will scale the position vectors, only this time filter out everything that is not contained in the top part from the newly created geometry. We will invert the top geometry selection by using a boolean math NOT node. Scale the position vector all the way to zero. To create the ridge for this side, connect a combined vector node to the offset input and multiply the same ridge height input by negative 1 into the Z channel. Don't forget to merge by distance once more. With that done, the modeling part of this tutorial is finished. We've managed to model a procedural star with a user-defined number of points, custom radius range and also custom ridge height. Keep in mind that because of our special method for modeling, the star is made up of disconnected mesh islands that we can animate around at our own pleasure. Let's have all the nodes we used thus far joined into a new frame and rename it Modeling Part. Let's break down the animation we will perform. First, each part of the star will move away from the center then it will rotate around the axis of movement and in the end it will move back towards the center. Add a set position node and make some room. Go back into our node tree before the extrude takes place and insert a capture attribute node. Change the attribute type to vector and the domain to face. To capture an attribute means to store a particular information of the geometry at that state and propagate it down the tree, making it available to the resulting geometry. The attribute we will capture is the position vector for each face. Because we captured the attribute at this particular point in our tree, the information will be available to all the faces that will be generated from this source. The position of the faces represents the average vector of all the points for that polygon. 
In our case, that vector corresponds to the direction that each face will be moving along. Add a couple of reroute nodes to keep things organized. Normalize it and scale it using a vector math scale node. Now the scale value represents the real length of the movement from the center. Add the scaled vector to the current position of the geometry and connect the result to the set position node. The animation will be automated based on time and will repeat during a certain interval. To set that interval, let's connect the seconds output to a map range node. Uncheck the clamp toggle. It will make sure that the mapping continues even after time has reached the limit set in the input range. Leave the minimum input to zero. For the maximum, create a new group input and call it interval seconds. Set its type to integer, default value to two, minimum to one and maximum to four. Leave the output range from 0 to 1. To repeat this interval, add a modular node with a value of 1. Now every 2 seconds, the timer will count from 0 to 1 and repeat indefinitely. The movement happens in two stages. First stage is moving away from the center and the second is returning to the center. Let's set this up. Add another map range. This time leave the clamp toggled enabled. Set the input range interval from 0 to 0 0.25. This means that during the first quarter of the time interval the value for the movement will reach its maximum. Duplicate this node and change the input interval from 0 0.75 to 1. In this other case, the movement will happen during the last quarter of the time interval. Now subtract the second map range result from the first. What will happen is this. During the first quarter of the movement, the value will increase until it hits maximum. It will then stay stagnant and will only decrease during the last quarter of the time interval. Feed the result to the scale value and hit play. You can see the animation repeat. Of course the range movement is too large, so add a multiply node before the scale, create a group input to control this value and rename it to movement range. Set the minimum value to 0 and the maximum to 1. The next step will be the rotation. Add a vector rotate node. For the axis, use again the normalized vector from the captured position attribute. Play with the angle slider to get a feeling for what is to come. The angle is also to be updated procedurally. Let's cut it short this time and duplicate the group of nodes used to animate the movement. Leave only one map range node. Change the input range from 0.25 to 0.75. Also change the maximum output to 2 times pi. This means that between the first and the last quarters of the time interval, the rotation value will reach a full circle. Connect the result to the angle input and hit play again. The pieces move apart, rotate and move back together all at the same time. We will take care of animating them in sequence now. Duplicate the timer nodes one last time. Delete map range nodes and to the value of the modular operation add the star point count number from the group input node. Compare and see if this value is equal to the island index number. Change the data type to integer and connect it to the selection input of the set position node. 
And with that we're done. One last thing I would recommend is to change the interpolation type for the map range node from linear to smoother step. Play around with the time interval lengths. Also, tweak any other settings to your liking. I tried to keep this video short and to the point and hope you all learned something new. If you like it, please share the knowledge.